So, so I have a question for you. So um, I've heard a number of times that Advent can be called a little Lent. So how do we tie repentance into this season and how does this, this play out in our walk? And penance. Yeah, that's so um, there's this kind of back and forth about uh, like a disagreement argument among priests and, and theologians about the penitential character of, of Advent. It's a purple season, a violet season, and violet is the color of penance. Um, historically, like way back before, back in the um, like seven, 400s, 500s, 600s, into the 800s, there's this back and forth about what this season is. And it was at different times called a little Lent or St. Martin's Lent or, or the season of St. Philip's Lent, all these different ways that kind of measured from a feast day to Christmas, the type of fasting, and then later abstinence that should actually take place in this season. So early in the tradition, starting really with the tail end of the patristic period, there is a, normatively a fasting and abstinence in, in Advent. And it is a, a mini Lent, mini because it's shorter, slightly less uh, directly penitential. But you can't prepare the way without repentance. Uh, when when, when the, the, it's in the Gospels, John the Baptist in Advent calls out, prepare the way, repent and believe the kingdom of God is here. There's this inevitability about a penitential spirit that comes up as we recognize, not that we're just uh, wretched and should hate ourselves, but rather the one who's approaching is so worthy of the, the best offering that I could possibly make that everything in me that looks unlike Christ is repulsive to me. Like I dread the stuff in me that makes me not look like Jesus. And so I, I fast to detach myself from creatures and the ways that I've come to love things that are not God more than I love God. Um, so all through the tradition, this is a thematic that comes up in Advent, um, less formally in recent years, but the penitential character remains. It's in the, in the scriptures. It's also in the prayers. It's in the way that we're invited to preparation. So you don't necessarily, in practical terms, sometimes people do give something up for Advent the way they do for Lent. Um, I, we used to do that actually growing up. I did, and I still periodically do. But at very least, there needs to be a question on your heart of like, how, how am I disciplining my passions and my attachments and testing those attachments? Because it's always in view, the no to like the enjoyment of created delights is always a yes to their creator. Like when I detach from the things that I love that I don't necessarily need, I'm able to bind myself more fully to the one who gave them to me and created them in the first place. So that'll come up throughout the book uh, at least three or four times. I speak about repentance and conversion and fasting because though it may not be like the, the central uh, topic of Advent, I don't think you can do Advent well without confronting your own sinfulness because in the end, what you're trying to do is adore the Lord well. And that requires a pure sight. The pure of heart shall see God. And wherever we carry impurity, we have to repent, confess, and then stand fast in his grace. Amen. Amen.